All right, with Paris Namowski. Uh, hopefully, I said your last name properly. Did I? Was I close? It was about eighty percent. It was close. It was close. Say it. Say it. Say it to me again. Say it back to me. Namowski. Namowski. And what is that? What's the What's the background? What's Macedonian. The... Macedonian. Wow. Yeah. Okay. The final curtain call is the short film played at the experimental film festival. You are the writer. You are the uh, uh, co-producer, and you're also the lead in the film as well, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. In what city, what country did you guys do this, this film? We did this in Los Angeles. But there's Australian kind of roots in this film too, right? Yes. Yes, I'd say so. Yeah. And what's your, what's your, what's your accent? Is that, what, what, what is that? Where does that accent come from? It's an Australian accent. There you go. Yeah. So there's Australian roots, right? So, yeah. That, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you've been in Los yeah. Angeles for a long time? For a little bit, yeah. I came over here to study with the American Arts Film and Television Academy, and that's how I got the opportunity to create this film and be able to do this out here, which was really cool. It is really cool uh, because it's not a conventional film. Like, hence, we played at our experimental festival. But there is a beginning and a middle end story here. There is a cohesive story. So I'm curious about the seed of the idea. Where did this kind of spawn from? You you have a co-writer credit. I don't know if you came up with the idea. How was that process coming up with the story? Yeah, so back in, I think it was like 2022, I was in a music video that was on human trafficking and child trafficking, and I was the lead actress. And after learning that role, I researched into human trafficking and I became really passionate about the topic because how bad it was I didn't realize how bad it was because it's not talked about in you know society it is an uncomfortable topic but finding out that over 27 million people are trafficked worldwide and like two kids sold every minute it really it really like hit me and so I always had that at the back of my head for a while and then when I came to study with AFTA out here in LA um, and I had the opportunity to create and pitch a short film. I knew I instantly wanted to do it on human trafficking. So if I was able to be chosen to create my film and have some sort of platform to speak on something that actually matters and has meaning and is important to be heard. So uh, when I pitched my idea initially, uh, it started off a little different, but it was still on the same sort of track of human trafficking and it kind of evolved and got to the point of where it is now because I wanted it to be impactful but also digestible for viewers so it wasn't too confronting because yeah. my the biggest aim was I just wanted to make people aware and spark some sort of conversation with it and it's that fine line of like wanting to to tell and make an entertaining film at the same time right yes yes right that's why we then brought in music to it because music is such a powerful art form to convey specific emotion and you know help tell a story but also give it that like entertaining kind of factor so that's why we also brought then the music element into it as well gotcha and so i, I gotta I, I gotta um also touch bases that you're kind of like you have a social media presence right you have uh, a tick like a nice yeah. tiktok channel and you kind of tell talk yeah. about these issues as well on your tiktok channel I've spoken about a bit about it on, yeah, my Instagram as well. Yeah. And yeah, yes. So I do want to continue speaking about it and use the platforms I do have to spread awareness. Yes. When did you start, like, when did you start doing your uh, social media kind of blast? I'm just curious because you get, like you said, you have a good following and it's not, it's not hard. It's not easy yeah. to do. Let's put it that way. I would say I only really started actually kind of getting into social media at the end of last year. Okay. So it's been pretty recent, yeah. And you yeah. just think that because you're like, there's a certain vanity that you have, <laughs> and uh, also that you you're saying you're you you're telling entertain you're making entertaining videos. All this, like I said, it's not easy. You like yeah. you kind of give no, content yeah. all the time, right? Yeah, for sure. Always thinking about content, always doing it. I find it really enjoyable. It's another way to just continue being creative and you know, show all the sides of me that I love as well and use the platform for good. So yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah. So your your character in this film is kind of a kind of an observer, I guess. Would that be fair to say? Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's all kinds of like imagery and things like that. I'm curious about the mm -hmm. script. Was there like an actual script written? Like uh there was. Okay. Yeah. So we kind of had 
um, so each person was kind of a different section of the story as my main character, Ella, meets these different people. So we kind of slowly piece together the stories and she kind of learns more about her situation through the stories of the other people until the big kind of reveal happens at the end of what's really going on. So yeah, there was a script written. Um, me along with Hannah Carmen and Jessica Orchik, we wrote the script together. So yeah, it was really, really fun to also get into writing as well. I've never written my own short before. So that was also really, really interesting and a fun process to do as well. And this was all done at the, you mentioned it before, at the American Arts Film and Television Academy? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Have you graduated yet? Yes. Yes. That was a six month course. So I did that last year, graduated awesome. end of December. Yeah. And then what did you, what was your like field of expertise in the, in the program? Um, we basically did a bunch of really everything. It was not, it was mainly focused on acting for sure, but also building yourself as a well-rounded artist so we did things like writing and filmmaking and creating and learning the business side of things treating mm -hmm. yourself like a brand so it was a very like well-rounded course to understand yourself as an artist as an actor um and to yeah really learn about each side of the industry were you taking uh like were you doing acting in in, in australia before you came to, to los angeles yeah i have been signed with an acting agent since I was like four or five years old. So I've been kind of in this industry doing a bunch of things since I was really young. And then, yeah, just making the leap to come and study in the place to be in the big entertainment industry out here in LA. So made that leap to come and study out here, which was one of the best decisions ever. I definitely learned and grew so much as an artist and actor out here. How was, how, so the leap was like, it's an okay, I know it's not, it's not easy to do, right? It's like it's a different culture, different hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> right yeah it's crazy oh, winter and coming out here having opportunities yeah mm -hmm. it was a big leap to even commit to even like a six-month course like being over here like it was a little scary but definitely what I wanted to do and was I've learned so much and yeah I really really enjoyed it are you so you're staying or are you are you gonna go back well, I've been doing some other courses here, so I've been um, invited back for some other courses and things like that. So been going back and forth. Gotcha. Okay, so tell me about the. So was everybody on the on the crew from the school? Was everybody like everybody was part of the school? Well, a few people were yes, and then some others were like. Uh, friends of friends and connections that you know we knew people through people that wanted to help out so it was very much through the school for sure and people that we knew in our own networks and then jessica and robbie were the the directors of the film yes yes they were and where do you know them from 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 school yeah, from the school yes so jessica is the founder of after and robbie is the ceo that's what I thought. I was just, yeah. So then they just, they just wanted to do this film with you. Is that how it worked? Or yeah. It worked so when we pitched our ideas, people that um, from the school that wanted to come on board and help out, like chose specific films they wanted to help on and work on. And with my idea, I know Jess fell in love with it and really wanted to help create my passion project and make it come to life. And then Robbie also just loved the idea and really wanted to come on board as well. So I was really fortunate that, they saw my idea and believed in me and believed in the film and wanted to come on board. So it seems like Jessica and you have a lot in common. You're both child actors. You're both from Australia. You're both yes. kind of like wanting yeah. to stop into other creative elements. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is true. Sometimes she's called me like her mini, the mini version of her because we do have those things in common. Yeah. That's kind of a weird, that's kind of a strange coincidence. And like, in yeah. like, in Los Angeles I know there's like it's a huge city of a lot of actors but like not many people yeah. like start when they're four or five years old like you guys did that's very true yeah but she's definitely helped me a lot along the way I've learned so much from her and she continues to mentor me in this acting world as well and give me a bunch of advice so very very grateful to her yeah are you part of the editing process of this film no, I wasn't. So Robbie actually edited the film. I was able to give um, like feedback and things like that, but he solely edited it. Well, you're like in every scene, right? So it's it's uh, yeah. it's like it's like it's the trick of like I'm sure you've been told this before. You're a young actress. It's like when you start making your own films, it's like you got to separate yourself from the mm -hmm. like from the, your own kind of like hangups. I guess we all have hangups. 
right? Yeah. Or vanity. Yeah. And, uh, and basically, <laughs> basically, that's a character that's not you when you're editing, I guess, right? So. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, so then, then, so then the, he just edited and he did the sound design, like, because it's a pretty extensive music and sound design. Yeah. He's got the music. Yes. Right. So the music, all the five songs are original songs. So yeah, we wrote them all, uh, me and some other girls as well. Hannah Carmen wrote the majority of them as well. Um, and then we got the music and made all that come to life, which was a process in itself. And then, yeah, Robbie added it all in with the editing. So yeah, gotcha. it was really cool. And then he had to find that tone where like we you discussed before about like, not being being so like in the face of people about human of course it's like without goes without saying it's a huge subject but you don't want to turn people away i guess you want yeah. it's a fine line when you're in the editing process between the two things right yeah that's why we were actually unsure whether to make it super upbeat at the beginning and like throw the audience off or whether to have that more like eerie tone from the start so we were yeah definitely playing around with that aspect because yeah like you were saying we wanted it to be that fine line between eeriness but throwing the audience off so they're a bit unsure but yeah finding that balance for sure especially since it is a short to tell as much as we want to tell in that short amount of time yeah it was definitely a fine line and then and then basically like it's like where did you guys find the because there's a lot of great performances in here and a lot of hard performances because you're not really using conventional kind of dialogue, conventional scenes where like you're kind of in a studio and you got to portray the emotion. Plus a lot of people are singing as well. Like, so yeah. these are, these are not easy roles to find. Where did you find the, your rest of your cast? So the rest of my cast, uh, a few of them were from the acting course I was doing. So okay. that was really easy to get people to collaborate uh, with that were actually in my course um, so I got some people from there and then Jess knew the dancers and brought them on board to dance in the background as well and then one girl I knew she was just one of my great friends and is an amazing singer and I wanted to bring her on and I kind of pitched her my idea and she's like oh my gosh I'd love to be involved so I brought her on as well so really it was just uh, people we knew and people from my course. Gotcha. Yeah. So then it's it, so then the 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 school must be proud of this film, like it's got yes. awards it's doing like going it's playing at a bunch of festivals, correct? Yeah. Yes. And uh, and basically, so what did you guys think of the audience feedback video that we sent you? What the, what the audience had to say about your film? I loved it. I almost like cried tears of happiness because I obviously had this idea and then to watch it come to life like from the very beginning initial like pitching stage through all of pre-production production and post-production and then being able to see what other people thought and that my idea that I wanted to come across was actually like picked up and people kind of understood the story I was telling just meant the world to me so I yeah I was I was speechless I had to like keep watching it back I was like wow they actually enjoyed my thing my little like baby my little passion project and yeah so it meant a lot to me and I was I was very happy in yeah. and, and, and your crew my, like Jessica and Robbie they must be like ecstatic that they like they're because I guess they're there's I think Jessica was the one who submitted to the festival so she's she she, yeah. she really believes in this film too yes and that meant the world to me for her to come on board and really keep pushing me anytime I had any doubts or there were any little setbacks she was always there to be like no you know we've got this we've you know we'll keep going we'll keep pushing so she was definitely a huge part of it and yeah it meant a lot that she believed in it and believed in me and continues to believe in it afterwards and yes submitting it to these festivals and it's just been an incredible time a great collaboration and yeah very very grateful for it all so let me ask you how does one start uh so you said your first job was when you were about around five years old mm -hmm. yeah how does one did you tell your parents you wanted to be an actor or they just they were the industry how does that how does one become a child actor so originally I started dancing when I was two years old so I could probably barely I could only just walk and I was already dancing and my dance teacher actually used to be in the entertainment industry in Australia and she was the one who mentioned to my parents that 
I had this little spark in me. She could tell this little entertainer in me. And she said to my parents, like, you need to get her to audition for an agent. So it was actually through my dance teacher that I went and auditioned for the agent I was with and got signed at four or five years old. And then from there, I started doing like commercials, short films, presenting on Disney and Nickelodeon, touring with musicals. I was in Matilda the Musical around Australia and New Zealand. So it just kind of went up from there. But it really all started from my dance teacher seeing this little spark and passion inside of me from yeah, a really young age. So you're like you're you're a triple threat. You can sing, you can dance and you can act. Yes, I can. Yeah. And then, and so, and then, so you just, did you have a, like, did you graduate from high school? Did you have a conventional childhood? Like, how was that? I did. Yeah. I continued uh, to do all my schooling years. I graduated grade 12, finished with a great mark. Um, I would say I had a pretty normal childhood like anyone else. It was just, instead of having a typical job that people would have, my job would be doing acting or things like that. So I did miss a bit of school here and there and <laughs> probably had a few more days off than other people would uh, sure. growing up doing like, jobs and things like that but otherwise I definitely had a normal childhood and when I was away from school for my biggest thing Matilda the musical I still did school and we had tutoring and I just did it like away from school which was a crazy experience but yeah definitely because your work you're performing like every day right when you're doing the musical Yes. Well, for me, because I was a child, we had three different casts and we would rotate. So we would do like three shows a week. But then on top of that, we'd have rehearsals and tutoring. And always they were very strict on making sure we kept up our schoolwork so that we didn't fall behind or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just remember being on movie sets with like child actors and they were like they were doing their homework. Right. But but uh, I, I, it was audio podcast. I put I put up my fingers and because they weren't doing, mm -hmm. it, but yeah, I was actually good at getting it done. I would go there, I would get it done super yeah. quick, so I would just get it out of the way. I worked really well independently, so I actually enjoyed it. I was like, this is great. I can go to school or what we had as school for like one hour, two hours, and get like my whole work done for the entire week. So I enjoyed it. And then it's so interesting because you you end up changing through puberty, right? And then mm -hmm. so you got to go, you go through that kind of shift where like, you're not like the, you're still cute, but you're not the cute little child anymore. Right. So yeah. Yeah. You're the cute young yeah. teen, teen and then, you know, mature puberty is not good for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. At least most the people. Yeah. And then you, mm -hmm. then you become a teenager and then it's like almost like a different career. You're like you're a different, you're a completely different mm -hmm. human being. Mm -hmm. There's always that awkward age where you're, too old to play like someone really young but then you're not old enough to play like an older like it's just there's that yeah. weird age gap where it's like you're a bit unsure when you are kind of hitting that puberty stage yeah. but now I'm older and it's great because I still look young so I can still play like 12 13 100%. 14 year old I was just gonna yeah. mention that like you can yeah you're like you can do the teen there's always a teen movie going on right I don't know if yeah. you have sure. in Los Angeles but you're like classic teenage high school student in whatever yeah. you know, tv show yeah. yeah for sure right and then yeah. that changes <laughs> and then that changes that, yes true. Don't worry about that, that is true yeah. no no i don't have to worry about that for a little while and you just you kept you keep to it like i'm sure there's a lot of child actors who kind of like you know they get away but you're like this is your passion this is your thing yeah yes i definitely stuck to it i knew i wanted to finish high school so I did focus on my school for a bit because I did just want to finish so yeah I finished my high school but I still yeah this is my passion this is what I want to do and I will continue reaching and chasing it and keep going because yeah it's what makes me happy that's amazing because you know there's a lot of luck involved right so it's like there's yeah. like you keep working hard and yep. then good things will happen but it's like some of it is a little bit there's a little bit of, there's a lot there's a lot of let's be honest there's, there's a lot of yeah a lot of luck right yeah, you need to have the right role at the right time and be the right look. And there are so many other factors that go into it. You know, if you have parents or a sibling, you need to look like them. And it all, there's so many pieces to the puzzle that, you know, sometimes actors don't realize it could have nothing to do with you or your talent for like getting a role or not getting a role. So yeah, there definitely is that element of luck involved, but you know, I believe my time will come when it's right. You can't be taller than the co-star, right? So all these factors, mm -hmm. but also too, the show's got to take off it's actually got to be yeah. successful yes. which is a whole yeah. 
chance of luck, right? So yeah, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> so many elements involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep at it. And it's like this is a really cool film for you guys. I like I like that you're doing films like this because I do watch. Obviously, I watch. I see a lot of films and people like your age and you're well educated, well, you're very already successful, and and it's like. You do you like it's like do something different. Show show people like a, di a different diversity. Show people a different tone in the film. If you're doing a short film, just do something like what you did. And sometimes it yeah. works, and sometimes it doesn't. But this one really works, and your performance is fantastic because you have a you have a you have a complete arc, and you're like crying, and you're like you're like you know what I mean. Like I'm I'm just saying you're crying, but basically you're yeah. like. You're going, th you're going through a lot like your character is going yeah. through a lot and it's not easy right and and it's like you got some really good stuff for your reel and really good stuff to to show people so congratulations appreciate that thank you thank you so i wish you the best of luck and let's talk again uh when you make your next film sounds good thank you so much for having me and keep making movies i will i will for sure thanks so much